everyone, welcome to Rocks and Change YouTube channel. My name's Fleur Hastings and today I'm going to show you how to make a gorgeous clasp. Now sometimes we make a piece of jewellery um, in a metal that you can't buy a ready-made clasp for, so you have to make it yourself. You don't have to be an expert jeweller to be able to make a clasp. It can be as simple as a gorgeous hook like this. If I just bring that into focus for you so you can see. I'll take some in depth photos as well so you'll be able to see it so you can see in this case I've got a gorgeous bare, math, bare copper uh, clasp that I've made here using very few tools you don't need a whole workshop full of tools you just need a couple of tools that you've probably already got a couple of items that you might have around your house um, and that's all you're going to need to be able to create a clasp that then allows you to have a fully handcrafted piece of jewellery from start to finish. So grab your tools and let's get started. Okay, so we're going to make this beautiful clasp. As you can see, this metal has been lovely and flattened out. So we've hammered this metal till it's nice and flat. But there's no marks on there because we've polished them out with our little nail block, which I'm going to show you, tell you about and show you in a second. So this is what we're, we're aiming for. We're aiming for this gorgeous little hook clasp, which then goes so nicely into your chain mail. And everything then is handcrafted from start to finish. So to actually make this clasp, we need a few tools, like we said before. We're going to need, um, to start with, we're going to need our, our little piece of metal. Okay, so in this case, I've got three inches of 1.25 bare copper wire. Um, it works beautifully with bronze and sterling silver. If you hammer plated metal, sometimes you can take the plating off. It can fracture away. So just be careful with plated metal. But this, like I say, is a 1.25. And when we flatten it out, it goes into that lovely, flat, wider look to that metal. We're going to need a hammer to actually hammer it. Now with your hammer, it needs to have a nice smooth face on there. So this face of the hammer here needs to be nice and smooth with no sort of like dents or dinks or scratches in it. So we can see, I probably could see the camera, there you go. So it's that reflective because it's nicely polished. So just give it a quick polish, make sure that there's no dents in it. And then your wire, when you hammer it, won't have any dents in it when you're hammering it. We need a steel block to be able to hammer onto. So this is a little steel block. This is my Impress Art um, steel block, which I love for making clasps because it's so little. Um, I'm not having to move around a big, a big steel block. This one's already got rubber feet onto there, but if you haven't got rubber feet on there, you could always put a rubber block underneath as well. So that's what we're going to do to, to actually hammer the piece of wire. Now to form the piece of wire, we're going to use obviously some cutters to cut the wire in the first place make sure that they're like more heavy duty especially as you go up in the gauges of wire so these are a real heavy duty zuron shear or, or cutter flush cutter which will cut quite happily up to 1.5 even 2 mil wire so just make sure that you haven't got very delicate cutters because it will struggle and you could damage your cutters if you're trying to cut something like a 1.25 you're going to need some round nose pliers or some baling pliers okay so with the baling pliers you've got different steps different sizes of, of loops that you can make okay so what you can do is we can make the the small loop on this side and then the large loop on this side if you like so step mail bale making pliers are very good for for a numerous amount of jobs in you know in your jewelry making but if you haven't got them then something like your um, round nose pliers is absolutely perfect. And then you need something round um, just to make the actual hook. But the handle of your pliers is a nice diameter to make the hook anyway. So you can just use a pair of these beautiful round nose. Um, I've already measured my piece of wire, but it's always handy to have a ruler. Mine's well loved, as you can see. This is just a little ruler. Um, Again, it's steel as well, so when you're cutting against it, you're not going to gouge into something like a plastic ruler. So I always prefer a steel ruler. And lastly, just something to finish off that piece of wire. So here I've got a little needle file that I've just attached into a handle. Um, and this is just like a half round needle file. But we just want to be able to um, 
file the edges down, file the ends of the wire down so that when we hammer it, we don't have a lot of cleanup to do after us. So we're just going to use this just to round the edges off. You might have a wire rounder already or something along those lines. You can use that. And then to get that final finish to your piece, so to make your piece look as gorgeous and shiny as this with no marks in it, we're going to use a nail block. Now, in the UK, these are quite inexpensive. You can find them from the pound shop, that kind of thing. They have four sides to them, and each side goes down in sort of like grade of finishing paper till you get to this last side here, which is step four, polish and shine, where you're going to get that gorgeous polished look. So let's get started. Taking my piece of wire, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that I file the end of my piece of wire so that it's nice and round. OK, now, like I say, if you haven't got a file, you could use an emery board, like a nail file or some um, wet and dry sandpaper, about 600 or 800 grit. Um, is absolutely fine but what we're doing is I'm just filing just that edge down just to make sure it's nice and smooth I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm going to make just a small loop on the end so it's almost like an eye pin loop now this loop has to be big enough to fit into the actual piece of jewellery that you're you're making. So this loop that we've just added is this loop here that we've added into the piece of jewellery. Okay, so this loop is that loop. Oh, let me turn it around so you can see it properly. There. Okay, so that's how that's going to start to form. Now, if you're not happy with that loop, what you can do is I'm just going to take my hammer and block and I'm just going to very gently just tap this so that it's it's straight. OK, so we don't want it sticking out one side more than the other. It has to be nice and straight. OK, and it doesn't have to be like um, an eye pin, which is on the bottom here. It needs to be off to the side. OK, now. We're going to use our bail making pliers now. So if we have a look at this piece here. You can see that now what we need to do is create this hook section. OK, so I'm going to keep that facing to the outside. I'm going to take my bail making pliers. Now, depending on if you're making a necklace or a bracelet, depends on how big this hook needs to be. So this hook here is the second largest on my bail making pliers and what I'm going to do and I'm going to do exactly the same I'm going to bring that piece of wire all the way around now you can see I've got a very long piece of wire here now the reason why I, I always start with three inches and then cut down is because if this loop goes wrong if you've cut your piece of wire if this loop goes wrong you're you haven't got much room then to cut that off and start again. So with three inches, you have got quite a lot of room to, to be able to start again. OK, so I've brought that all the way around till it's sitting now next to the actual loop. Now, metal does have a memory. So what I want to do is I want to bring it a little bit past and then I'm going to start with my finger. Can you see what I'm doing? I'm just moving that wire out okay so we can see that it's come around my plier and then just with the heat of my finger I'm just starting to make it kick out a little bit so what we've got now is this okay now you can go in and make that that shape all nice and perfect um, all you need to do is just I'll just go back in and just pull it a little bit further. So all I'm doing is just pulling it further round and then bring it back till it's nice and till it's nice and straight. Okay. So now we've got our little hook. Okay. So I'm not going to trim this end off just yet. I'm going to keep it on there because it gives me something to hold on to 
when I'm hammering it onto the block. So if I trimmed it off, it means that my finger's gonna be really close to that piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm holding it now on my block. I'm just gonna move these out of the way. I'm holding it onto my block by the loop and by this long tail end that we're gonna um, cut off in a minute. And what I want to do is I want to hammer all the way around this loop. Now I don't want to hammer this little tiny loop that I started with because if I hammer that I'm going to work hard on it and it means it's very difficult then to open and close it onto a piece of jewellery. So I'm just going to hold that there and I'm just going to start So as I'm hammering I'm slightly turning the metal as well you can see, if I just lift that up, and you see we're starting to get that flattened look to that piece, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn it over. Now obviously it's been hammered against a hammer, uh, a steel block, so it is um, hammered on both sides, it is flattening on both sides. I'm just going to hammer it a little bit more. Now, what I'm not doing and what I'm not allowing this to do is when I hammer it, I'm not allowing it to spread, okay? So I'm keeping these two quite close together. Okay? So you'll just carry on hammering until you've got the actual flattened amount that you're looking for. But if I just turn that now to the side, you can see we've now got a nice slim, a slimmer profile and a flattened piece of wire. So you can see now that wire's flattened out compared to what's here, okay? So what I'm gonna do now is just move it round and I'm just gonna hammer this little bit a little bit as well, okay? Now what I can do is I can decide, now this now is really work hardened. I can't move that in and out. That is really, really work hardened, okay? Now, if you've got little dapples on there where your hammer blows have, have overlapped each other, what you need to do is keep hammering until they've all gone. So you will be able to get rid of some of those marks, but it is nice to have sometimes like a, a hammered effect onto there. So now what I'm gonna do is take my cutters and I'm just gonna cut that end bit away. Now, what you can do if you want to now is if you have got a pair of flat nose pliers, you can make more of a, a definite kick to that so that as it goes into the bracelet, it, follow, it goes all the way through into the bracelet and there's a little gap here for the jump ring to go through. Now, we just need to finish off this end so it's nice and smooth, so again, using my file or or your nail file or whatever you've got I'm just making that nice nice and round get that over so you can see I'm just filing in one direction so I'm filing from the handle to the tip so I'm pushing it away from me I'm not filing backwards and forwards so it's almost like when you're filing your nails, you're gonna keep it, for those of you that do file your nails. Those of you that don't file your nails, you probably don't know what I mean. So we're just pushing away, and just making sure that's nice and rounded, okay? So now what we can do is we can go to our nail block and we can start on side number one. Now what I like to do is put the actual clasp onto the nail block and rub it. So I'm going backwards and forwards on one side and I'm going to turn it over and can you see straight away we're starting to get that lovely luster. So that's side one finished. We're then going to move to side two and again exactly the same. Moving that up and down Turn it over. These nail blocks might not be any good for your nails afterwards, but they're gonna last you a long time Oops. when you're making these clasps. So that's side number two. Then we're gonna go to side number three. 
And again, just flip it over and we can see straight away how gorgeous that, that is looking. And then finally, to give it a final polish on side number four. And there we've got, excuse my dirty fingers, but there you go. You can't make metal things without getting a bit grubby. But there you've got now a gorgeous hook that will go in. I and mean you can open that a little bit if you've got a wide jump ring for it to sit through. But there you've got a gorgeous hook, which you can then use in your necklaces and your bracelets. If I just bring back the bracelet and show you. There you've got exactly the same style of hook, which will go into beautifully into all of your pieces. So I hope you've liked this tutorial. If you have liked it, I'd love it if you could subscribe to my channel. Um, just press the subscribe button and it will let you know then when I'm going to post another video and uh, hit the notification button. But until next time, I'll see you soon.